What's cracking, guys? Omar Esoff here. I got a really cool video today uh, all about butt wink and what I think is the most common issue. Uh, this is something I haven't really talked about. Butt wink is something I've had to deal with. Uh, before I go on, I'm going to link a fantastic video from the man himself, Dean Somerset, going over butt wink and how it's not really the hamstrings. Also, how uh, to be aware that everyone's unique and everyone's different. You can't necessarily, for an individual, eliminate butt wink completely. This depends upon your physiology. But what I am going to talk about is having poor mobility in another area. Your shoulders, lack of external rotation, is probably the most common problem or issue why people will have an excessive butt wink. And so it's kind of counterintuitive. Everyone always talks about like, oh, hips, right? Like you gotta talk about your hamstrings. You gotta talk about, uh, you know, maybe your hip flexors are tight. And while your hip flexors and a few other things can contribute, the biggest thing when we see butt wink tends to be the low bar squat. And the low bar squat, the difference between the low bar and the high bar actually has to do with external rotation. You require more external rotation the lower down the bar travels along your back of your shoulders. And if you have inadequate external shoulder rotation, what's going to happen? You're going to compensate with another area, your spine. And so with your thoracic area, you have extra thoracic extension. What's going to happen? Your hips are going to shoot back. That's going to hyperextend the lower lumbar. And basically what you'll notice with a lot of people that don't have that mobility or they set the bar really, really low uh, is that their hips shoot back, they hyperextend, and then when they come down, they get tremendous pressure on those hips to round underneath. The hips kind of move underneath and you get that classic butt wink. And really what you're seeing is the spine going from kind of a hyperextended state to more of a neutral, it's normal uh, uh, position. I'm gonna talk about why this can be potentially an issue and what most importantly to do about it in order to try and mitigate this. I can say for myself, this is a really important video because when I first tried to do low bar, uh, low bar squats, I set the bar way too low on my back and naturally then what I thought you should do is like, oh, arch, 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 right? So you gotta arch your back excessively and so I had that hyperextension of the lower lumbar and that's what I think led to the issues uh, with my SI and whatnot. So when it comes to the butt wing, people ask, you know, is it an issue? Well, here's a simple explanation, once again, without going into details. If you have some slight butt wink and you find you have no pain, no irritation in that area from squatting with that butt wink, then you should be fine, right? If on the other hand, you do have a butt wink, like myself, uh, when it came to the low bar squats, and you do get irritation, like the next day, like your back's just kind of sore, like kind of your tailbone, your sacrum, uh, you know, a lot of different things. Your SI might be a little banged up. That is an issue and that's something you have to address. So for those individuals out there looking to solve their butt wink, I'm gonna go over the most common issue and how to fix it. So as I said before, let's just take this as an example to test what I'm talking about. You should squat high bar, right, with the bar high on your back, where you have no external rotation demand, so your shoulder basically doesn't have to do anything. Rest it on your upper back, squat, you know, pretty vertical torso, and analyze when your butt wink occurs. Next, then, what you want to do is you want to go into a low bar position. So lower the barbell, lower onto your traps. So from your upper traps down to kind of, you know, right above your rear delts on your rear delts. Okay. Now what you want to do is do your classic, you know, low bar squat and analyze when the butt wink occurs. What you'll probably notice is that the butt wink occurs a lot sooner on the low bar squat. If you notice too, the thing you want to pay attention, I'm putting side by side diagrams here, is the position of the spine when you squat. When it comes to the high bar squat, once again, because you don't need that external rotation with those shoulders, what will happen is your spine will probably be neutral, right? You'll be pretty vertical, you'll squat no problem. When you low bar, a lot of people, what's the cue? I was uh, told this myself, put the bar as low as possible. Well, the lower and lower you put it, the higher the external rotation demand on the shoulder. If you don't have that, it has to come that mobility from somewhere else, your spine. And that's not a good uh, place to get mobility from. So what you'll see when it comes uh, to the high bar versus the low bar is that your spine will extend in order to get that extra mobility. It already shoots your hips out back there, hyperextends the lower lumbar, bam, you got a butt wing. That's what's going on. And that shear, that pressure on the lower back is not good. Two other things that can also contribute before I go on to external rotation exercises for the shoulder to help you out uh, uh, when it comes to the butt wing. Two things to keep in mind. One, when you use a belt, right, a lot of times individuals, they'll breathe too much into their chest, right, as opposed to their stomach they won't brace so when they breathe into their chest they breathe high and what they do once again they extend with their spine they hyperextend down their ass shoots back and that puts their body in a position 
to have that hyperextension, right? To have that butt wink occur. The second main issue too, it could honestly just be cueing. Uh, I was taught first way back in the day, and that's why I'm like, fuck low bar. I'm not gonna do low bar because it feels awkward as hell. Uh, I was taught to really extend out the spine and push, like not sit back, but push back. So get a, it kind of, it looks like an anterior pelvic tilt when you're squatting. So it could be three things. Uh, belt, how you use that, how you breathe. It could also be related to how you sit back when it comes to the low bar squat. We've been told obviously to push back, initiate break with the hips, but sometimes then we extend with our spine instead of sitting back, pushing back with the hips. Uh, but the most important one is that external rotation. If you don't got the mobility, you're gonna make it up elsewhere, you're gonna fuck up your back. So let's talk about how to solve this. There's a few things that we can do. I'm gonna test and retest in order to evaluate what's going on. The first thing, if you want a straight test to test your external rotation is to lie on your back, and what you're gonna do with a 90 degree angle, you can do the standing, but what happens when people uh, stand, they'll once again, they'll extend with their spine like so, and so you don't get an accurate evaluation. Lie on your back on the ground, and what you wanna do just with a 90 degree angle, you wanna see what type of external, and you can also check out the internal, but external rotation you have. If you're able safely, with your spine being neutral, you're not extending as you're bringing it down, the external rotation. If you can touch the floor, oh, that, that's pretty good, that's a pass. If you cannot touch the floor without your spine or your back moving to try and complete that movement, you fail, okay? You lack the external rotation, that's also probably why your shoulders irritate you when you low bar squat. Maybe you got elbow issues because then you try and overcompensate by moving your elbows high. There's a lot of things that uh, happen at once and that's really why wrist wraps are used uh, when it comes to the low bar squat. Anyways, that's the basic test, right? You can also do this, as I said before, standing. Now, what to do about it? So. The first thing we want to talk about, we want to talk about, you know, just self myofascial release. We want to talk about lacrosse balls, foam rolling, and whatnot. Everyone's unique, everyone's different. In this area, I'm going to glaze over a little bit more because there's some actual stretches, some exercises I want you to do. Basically, when it comes to self myofascial release, you want to find the tight areas, the areas that are inhibiting you, maybe your pec minor, maybe your lats, maybe uh, uh, something in the back of your shoulder, underneath the scapula. You want to find those tight knots, those tight uh, areas that kind of just feel sticky, they don't operate effectively, and you want to apply some pressure on them with the foam roller, with the lacrosse ball. Find those tight areas and work on them daily, right? Because you're probably a power lifter, you do a whole lot of you know benching, maybe you do uh, uh, some pull-ups and whatnot, that's a lot of internal rotation work. You got to work on that external rotation. Moving forward now to the next movement that we want to talk about. We want to talk about doing some basic external rotation exercises. You're going to notice two different exercises. The first one, you can do just body weight to try and evaluate once again that range of motion. First start with no weight whatsoever. These are your external rotators, right? Your rotator cuff, these are small muscles. You don't want to overload them. You don't want to snap your shit up. Uh, just make sure you open up a little bit uh, with uh, body weight, then you can move on to light dumbbells. We're gonna do one of my favorite variations. Shout out to Eric Cressy, the dude is smart. Once again, in order not to overcompensate with the back, we're gonna use an actual bench to support our elbow, and we're gonna use a dumbbell, very light. Like guys, I'm talking like if you got two pounds in the gym, five pounds, use that to work up to it. And what you wanna do, you wanna bring the hand back, you wanna bring the forearm back until it's about 90 degrees, uh, you know, and, until it's 90 degrees to the floor. And what you wanna do is try and extend that range of motion gradually over time. So you do it weighted in order to train those, uh, uh, the rotator cuff muscles, but you wanna use light weight, do higher repetitions, focus on good technique. You use the bench essentially to make sure that you're not extending with the back. And if you have been doing this for a while, it'll feel kind of weird just to do, you'll feel burn inside your shoulders because for so long probably you're using your back instead of your shoulders to get that external rotation mobility. Uh, so you want to do it with dumbbells. You can also do it lying on the ground, right? You can also do it lying on your side. Uh, you want to make sure that you do this one properly. Probably put a towel or some sort of support underneath it so when you're rotating, you're doing this effectively. And make sure, once again, you don't go past the proper range of motion. If anything hurts, if anything feels weird, fucking stop it. This should be lightweight, right? This should feel good on your shoulder. So we want to work on some of those basic external rotation exercises, try and strengthen that area. Three, moving forward, face pulls. Yeah, I've talked about them a whole lot, but this one is gonna be about like prehab, rehab, making sure you got strong shoulders. Ever since I started doing weightlifting, I also started doing a lot more, uh, you know, external rotation exercises. My shoulders feel fantastic. Face pulls are a really cool movement because you can load them, right, uh, in terms of weight. You get a training effect, you can build muscle hypertrophy in that area, and you can train external rotation. So you wanna take it with a supinated grip, you're basically doing like a double bicep, and if you look at the end of the face pull, you're basically trying to get that end range of motion. As I said before, you basically need about 90 degrees, you need a little bit more if you want a low bar squat, but about 90 degrees mobility in the shoulders in order to low bar effectively. Well, the face pull, the end position, you wanna make sure that you're pulling back 
leading with the hand to try and get that mobility. So your end position, it shouldn't be elbows back, it should be wrist up top, almost in that 90 degree angle, really working those rotator cuff muscles. Uh, moving forward to, we're gonna do some dynamic stuff, we're gonna do some passive stretches. Uh, for a long time, uh, taking a cue from weightlifters, they need to work on a lot of external rotation in order to catch the clean, in order to do a lot, whole lot of different things. Uh, we're gonna use a different variation, though, shout out to Greg Knuckles, uh, my boy, for this variation right here, because this is a loaded stretch, essentially. What you're gonna do, you're gonna put a barbell behind your head, and then you're gonna remove it away from your body, let it levitate, so your elbows rise up, that's external rotation, same idea. You're gonna keep the elbows in and try and rotate out like so. It's a loaded movement, it's gonna be essentially a loaded, static stretch. You're gonna start with the barbell, trust me, you think, man, like, dude, a, a barbell, come on. Use the barbell and watch what happens. Uh, you will feel that stretch once again in the external rotators. Uh, then gradually over time, just like I kind of did when it came to ankle dorsiflexion uh, with the uh, barbell, with the weights on either side, gradually overloaded with time and you should notice a dramatic difference. In addition to this, I'm gonna show right now a few passive stretches that you can do. The bottom line when it comes to all these movements, these are just exercises that I've chosen that should definitely help when it comes to external rotation of the shoulder. Uh, that's something you need for a whole bunch of different movements. You know, it comes to, when it comes to the overhead press, when it comes to the front squats, uh, low bar squats, however, when I see butt wink and when I see individuals, I'm now, you know, we uh, train clients as part of Ascendant Athletics. I've helped a lot of people uh, in person, so many clients uh, that I've seen. The big issue tends to be, it's like, yeah, they mobilize their hips. The form's actually pretty good. They just set the bar really low on their body, right? And then they extend with the spine instead of with the shoulders because they don't have that rotation. Uh, the bottom line that you want to consider, the takeaway point besides what I uh, listed guys, is that this should produce a good result, a big difference uh, for you guys out there. Let me know in the comment section below. Make sure you film side by side. So try that high bar versus low bar. Try just that external rotation test. Uh, other things you could play around with is obviously grip width, where you keep your elbows. Keep in mind those that uh, tend to have their elbows higher, you might then get some elbow issues. So you don't want to just give a band-aid solution, right? Like, oh, like this position feels better, but my external rotation still sucks. Well, let's fix that external rotation. Uh, play with that and also play with the bar position, right? You don't need to set it as low as possible. Set it as low as comfortable in order to get that desired training effect. Let's train for a long time, people. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's a little long, but there's some whole lot of information. Anyways guys, that's the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. I got a whole lot of new content on the way. Final thing I want to say is I want to give a shout out to the NASM. As you guys know, I partnered up with them because I believe in furthering your education, trying to increase your knowledge. Their personal training certification uh, based out of the US, they have a free online two week trial. I've taken many certifications in my time, I think seven or eight, and uh, quite honestly, this certification, the NASM, is more comprehensive than what we were taught here in Canada. Uh, I think just, you know, they have a better program. I took a look at the uh, material and I agree with about 90% of it. So they got a free two week trial that you could try out by going to myusatrainer.com slash omar anyways guys squat strong squat safely let me know in the comment section below if this helped you guys out it's something i've been thinking about for quite some time if we could save one yellow from snapping his shit up from doing what i did then we've succeeded that's the video guys i'll be seeing everyone all my rascals in that next video peace